Tonight, storytellers on campus find out more. Plus, a former Czech Republic ambassador visits Troy. Stay tuned. Trojan Vision Nightly News starts now. From the High Definition Digital Production Center on the Troy campus, with news from Troy University locations around the world, this is Troy Trojan Vision Nightly News. Hello and welcome to Troy Church and Vision Nightly News for January 27, 2012. I'm Bailey Majors. And I'm Courtney Steele. Thank you for joining us this evening. Thursday night, Troy University students had an opportunity to hear from a former U.S. ambassador to the Czech Republic. Daniel Wallace was there to hear how students were encouraged to get involved in foreign affairs. Students had the chance to learn how to get involved with international issues and listen to the experiences of Jean Walker, United States ambassador to the Czech Republic. I think a sense of having helped the Czechs make the difficult transition from a dictatorship to a democracy and a market economy. They had accomplished a lot before I got to Prague, but there was still a lot of work to do, and they were very open to American help. So we worked together on a number of issues, and it was very rewarding. The lecture was presented by the Ambassador in Residence program at Troy. Dr. Charles Krupnik, chairman of the program, said it was a great opportunity for students to learn more about how the U.S. government deals with international issues. The Ambassador in Residence program at Troy University was begun about four years ago, and it's part of the uh, university's, and particularly the chancellor's, initiatives to involve the university in international issues. Um, things such as our uh, student exchange programs, the, the number of international students that we have in town, our encouragement to have our students go to uh, foreign universities to study. The program allows experienced ambassadors to visit the university for a week to give public presentations. Daniel Wallace, Troy, Trojan Vision News. Ambassador Walker will serve as Troy University's ambassador in residence for 2012. Today ended her tour of the Troy, Montgomery, and Dothan campuses. Last night, Troy University's History Department gave students a chance to learn about a major event in the Civil Rights Movement. Derricka James explains. Troy University Department of History and Phi Alpha Theta welcomed guest speaker Dr. Ray Arsenault, who gave students an insight on his work about the Freedom Riders. Well, the Freedom Riders were groups of uh, direct action, nonviolent activists who, back in 1961, got on buses uh, to try to see if they could get the Kennedy administration to enforce the law. Uh, there have been two Supreme Court decisions which, which uh, said that uh, interstate passengers could sit anywhere they wanted, you know, that the, the old segregation laws were no longer in effect. Uh, and uh, it was a, an attempt to uh, demonstrate that, in fact, the laws were being, were being uh, ignored. One student says that learning about the Freedom Riders inspired her, but also that everything is not as black and white as it may seem. Um, well, it makes me feel good because a lot of times they single you know, white people out because they feel like they were the enemy, but it shows that not necessarily, you know, because there were people that were fighting for us. There were white people that were fighting for us. I felt like how encouraging it is, you know, and like how, where would I be if these people didn't have the courage to do that. Arsenal said that in learning the complexities of Southern history, the people will be doing a disservice to themselves in thinking that America is a perfect nation and haven't made mistakes. He wants students to know the good and the bad so that students can learn from it to make informed decisions. I, think, I hope they learn to be truth tellers. Um, I think they oh, that it steals their nerve to be courageous and to, uh, to try to figure out uh, what they believe and to, to, to be, I think, uh, open to change. And the Freedom Rides is a, a great example. I mean, I think it, it show, it's an empowering story of ordinary people taking it upon themselves to try to make America a better place. And they were willing to die for that, even though they were just young kids uh, uh, who were being told they were insane for doing what they were doing. But they, they, they had a, a courage and a wisdom that uh, most other Americans didn't seem to, to have at that time. Derricka James, Troy, Trojan Vision News. The History Department will continue its look at the Freedom Riders on Wednesday, February 8th, as it will present a PBS documentary on the subject. The showing will take place in Patterson Hall 101 and is scheduled to begin at 6 o'clock. Well, Courtney, for the sixth year, the Pike Piddler Storytelling Festival will bring nationally known storytellers to Pike County. But for, before tomorrow's big event, area students were treated to a preview of what they can expect from the big show. Jeremy Ackles has the story. 
professional storyteller Kevin Kling shared his talents with students all over the area Friday morning. Kling's stories brought laughter and entertainment to the young audience, many who may have never heard a storyteller before. Kling hoped he could educate as well as entertain during his time on the Trojan Center stage. Mostly to have a good time. And then I was trying to infuse some different parts of storytelling, um, like to enjoy yourself while you're telling it, um, you know, uh, learn from mentors, um, and then have a good introduction, good invitation as you call it, okay. so things like that. The theater was packed, but even though it was on a college campus, college students weren't the only ones filling up the seats. We opened it up to the public schools in this region so they could actually come in and hear a professional storyteller of Kevin Kling's caliber. Literally, this, this studio uh, was filled with about 325 high school kids as well as Troy students. And even though the storytelling seemed to entertain, for some of the audience there was a lesson to be learned about a seemingly lost art. Well, I encourage students to tell stories in my classroom, personal stories, fictional stories, and I try to tell them that it's just an important part of just humanity. It's all about sharing stories. Kling's show Friday morning was just a taste of a bigger event taking place this weekend in Troy. There will be storytellers from all around the United States that will come and they'll do three shows, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, and one at night. It is for the public, there is a fee for it, but you will hear world-class storytellers that will just melt your heart and just make you feel so good. Jeremy Ackles, Troy Trojan Vision News. The festival is tomorrow in the Trojan Center Theater with three different shows throughout the day. Tickets for the 10 a.m. tickets are $10 for the 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. shows and $15 for the 6:30 show. And now taking a look at news from around the state, Roy Johnson kept getting his $132,000 a year pension after pleading guilty to taking bribes and kickbacks while serving as Alabama's community college chancellor. Republican State Senator Arthur Orr of Decatur says that it's wrong. He will introduce legislation to stop the state paid portion of a pension when a state employee or official is convicted of wrongdoing involving their public position. Jurors have recommended a death penalty for a Dothan man convicted of killing three people in 1996 at a residence police described as a crack house. Jurors made the recommendation yesterday in the case of 40-year-old Jerry Jerome Smith, whose death sentence was, has been overturned twice. An economic developer for Etowah County expressed concern that some foreign companies may be removing Alabama from their list of possible locations for new operations because of the state's tough new immigration law. Mike McCain made the comment yesterday at a meeting at a state committee. Still to come on Trojan Vision Nightly News, the Trojan men's basketball team hit the road to take on the conference leader. Daniel Percival will begin with the details next in sports. But first, the flu season is off to a slow start, but don't let that flu bug fool you. We'll have that story when we come back. Where's the flu this season? I'm Ines Foray in New York, and I'll have that story coming up. The first must-have app of 2012 is here. The Troy University app, available at the iTunes App Store, puts information and interaction with Troy University at your fingertips even when you're on the go. Whether you're a student, a faculty or staff member, alumni or a friend of Troy University, you'll find the Troy app indispensable. Students can work on online classes and get information about courses. Plus, there are campus maps, a staff directory with email and phone numbers, information about athletics, news and much more. Get it today. The Troy University app for iPhone, iPad and iPod Touch. definition digital production studios of Troy University. You're watching the award-winning Troy Trojan Mission Nightly News. And now for a look at what's happening across the nation and around the world, we go to Bailey Majors at the Global News Desk. Bailey? Thank you, Courtney. The flu season is off to a slow start, but don't let that flu bug fool you. Federal health experts say it's still probably on its way. Inez Ferre reports from New York. 
All right, just relax your arm. Sierra That's Nagy it. is getting her flu shot, even though it's been a mild season so far. I have two kids, so I figured I was better safe than sorry. The Centers for Disease Control says even though flu cases are down this year, people should still get vaccinated. Experts say it's not unusual to have a slow start to the season than a dramatic increase in late winter. We have heard reports from the state health departments who help us track that information that they're seeing more positive specimens. We might start to see some increase in activity shortly. Doctors aren't exactly sure why the flu hasn't been spreading, but warmer temperatures this winter may be playing a role. In the sense that a milder winter might lead to people doing more activities outside, staying indoors less, being around sick people less, it may have something to do with that. The low flu activity may also be a sign that people are getting vaccinated. It's Dr. Len Horowitz eight, says eight, if you haven't had your shot yet, get it zero. now. It's never too late to be vaccinated. Nagy isn't taking any chances. And hopefully I don't get the flu. <laughs> because she can't afford to be sick this winter. Ines Perret for CBS News, New York. Mitt Romney and Newt Gingrich are battling it out for a win in Florida. At a conference for Hispanic leaders today, Romney and Gingrich continued the immigration battle they began in a debate Thursday night. Danielle Nottingham has the story from Jacksonville. Mitt Romney and Newt Gingrich are speaking directly to Florida's Latino voters. I would like to, to extend El Sueño Americano to every single person in the country. Hola! After a few lighter notes at a conference for the Hispanic Leadership Network, the front runners attacked each other on immigration. Those people who've come here illegally should be able to be given a temporary status, a temporary work uh, permit, if you will, but at the end of a temporary period, they would return home. And this is where I had a deep disagreement with Governor Romney. The idea that grandmother is not going to be supported, the idea that she's going to self-deport, this is a fantasy. Florida is home to more than a million Hispanic voters. Many don't agree with the GOP candidates' positions on immigration and want them to address other issues. The question is, do you believe that Puerto Rico should be a state or not? Simple. What I believe, I just say what I believe, and if you don't like it, I'm sorry we disagree. I believe the people of Puerto Rico should make the decision. And both men declared their support for Cuba's freedom. I will be behind the voices of freedom here and the voices of freedom there. We will help Cuba become free. The Latino vote is especially important in South Florida, and securing it may be critical to a win in Tuesday's primary. Danielle Nottingham, CBS News, Jacksonville, Florida. More violence is sweeping across Iraq just a few months after the U.S. troops left the country. A car packed with explosives blew up, killing more than a dozen people taking part in a funeral march. Tina Krause reports from London. Mourners carried coffins of the dead after another suicide blast in Baghdad. A bomber struck a funeral procession for victims who died in an attack the day before. Friday's explosion ripped through this Shiite neighborhood, killing at least 31 people, half of them police officers who were guarding the ceremony. It's not fair, this man says. These bombings happen every day and the government does nothing. Just minutes after the car bomb, gunmen opened fire, killing two Iraqi policemen at a nearby checkpoint. Authorities blame Sunni Islamist insurgents for the escalating violence that has killed more than 400 people since U.S. troops left the country last month. Militants often target Iraqi security forces to make them look weak. We thought the situation would improve, this man says, but it's getting worse. The Shiite-controlled government in Iraq is locked in an intense political fight with Sunni opponents who want more power. There is growing concern the increase in militant attacks could put the country at risk of civil war. Tina Kraus, CBS News. That wraps things up from the Global News Desk. To see more stories from across the country and around the world, including an update about a mysterious illness in New York, you can tune in to Trojan Vision Global News right after the nightly news. Now back to you, Courtney. Thanks, Bailey. And now Danielle Parsons wants to look at sports. So, Danielle, I know that the men's basketball team weren't, wasn't at home last night, but they were back in action. That's right, Courtney. They did hit the court in action against the uh, conference leader of the Sun Belt. So let's get into that match. Okay. 
The Trojan men's basketball team has not had much success in conference play this season, only picking up two wins before Thursday night's matchup against league-leading Middle Tennessee State. And if they could have held on to the ball, they might have had a better chance to grab another W. Troy gave up 19 turnovers in a 71-58 loss to the Blue Raiders last night in Murfreesboro. That was the highest number of turnovers for the Trojans all season and led to 20 Blue Raider points. The Trojans shot 46%, but were just 5 of 18 from three-point range. Will Weathers led all scorers with 22 points. The Trojans were held under 60 points for just the third time this season, with two of those coming against the Blue Raiders. Up next, the Trojans travel to Mobile for a matchup against South Alabama Sunday afternoon. Tip-off from Mitchell Center is set for 5 o'clock. And the women's team is also coming off a loss to an undefeated Blue Raiders team. They fell to MTSU Wednesday night, 82-52. The women are now on a 10-game losing streak, but have the chance to snap it Sunday against South Alabama. The Trojans take on the Jags Sunday afternoon in Mobile. The Lady Jags are 11-9 and 4-4 and in the Sun Belt, and already have a win against Troy from earlier this season. Troy fell to the Jags 53-46 at Sartain Hall just two weeks ago. The Trojans will look to reverse that outcome Sunday at 3 o'clock. The women's tennis team will be in action on the home court for the first time this season this weekend. They're still looking for their first win and haven't won a set in two straight matches. On Saturday, the Trojans will face the Auburn Tigers at 1 o'clock. Then on Sunday, they'll take the court against Florida A&M. Both matches will be played at the Lunsford Tennis Complex. While the Trojans football season is over, one player is getting the chance to put on the helmet one last time. Senior offensive lineman James Brown will be participating in the Senior Bowl this Saturday in Mobile. Brown was a Trojan for three years and made 37 starts during his career with Troy. He was also a first-team All-Sun Belt Conference selection this season. Brown accepted an invitation to the Senior Bowl during the season and made the trip to Mobile on Sunday to begin practicing. The Senior Bowl is set to begin at 2 Saturday afternoon. And coming up later tonight on Trojan Vision, tune in to Trojan Sports Now to stay up to date on all things Trojan Sports. For a preview of this week's edition, here's Jonathan Sellers. Coming up on Trojan Sports Now, we'll have details of this week's Trojan basketball action, plus a look ahead at the upcoming games. Also, find out what one former Trojan is doing to impress NFL scouts this week. All that and more tonight on Trojan Sports Now. Again, Trojan Sports Now does come on tonight and will air at both 7 and 11. So, Bailey, Courtney, while neither team was able to pick up a victory against Middle Tennessee on the basketball court, uh, we'll hope for better results this weekend as they both face uh, South Alabama on Sunday in Mobile. So, uh, they aren't at home just yet, but they will be back in ho at home next week in action. So, uh, we'll just have to cheer them on from home this time around and get out there and support them this next week. Definitely. We'll hope to do that. Thank you, Danielle. Still to come on Trojan Vision Nightly News, Aaron Taylor finds out how students and community members can learn more about leadership. Plus, after some pretty wet weather yesterday, today turned out to be a pretty dry and gorgeous day. The last throughout the weekend, Tiffany? Courtney, I hope you're ready to put those rain boots away and bring out your sunglasses because we should be seeing sun coming up in weather. I knew it! I knew it! Oh, this isn't good. <laughs> I was a gift from him to her. I'm going to the animal shelter, which isn't necessarily bad. I just hate the stigma associated with shelter pets. People will think I bite or that I spray everywhere. They're the ones with problems. <laughs> I'm totally fine. Adopt me. You'll see. I'm going to go pack. At the heart of what we do in the College of Business is care for the students. We feel like the students are our most important uh, assets. I have never been anywhere where I've known so many students on first name basis. What we try to do at Troy University is provide an experience to students that not only provide the curriculum that allows them to be successful in the business world, but we also try to expand their horizons to reach greater opportunities that maybe they didn't think they were capable of before. From the high definition digital production studios of Troy University, you're watching the award-winning Troy Trojan Vision Nightly News. And now Tiffany Lester joins us with a look at weather. 
So, Tiffany, it seems like we started the week off kind of wet. You know, it was raining at the beginning of the week, but today the sun kind of peeked through those clouds. Are we going to be able to see more sun into the weekend? We did start off the week pretty gloomy, cloudy all day, most of the most of the beginning of the week. But we should be expecting some sun in the weekend, and I'll get into that in a minute. First, let's take a look at our Trojan Vision campus snapshot where we see the quad, Bib Graves quad, overlooking the university and the fountain that's not going. As we take a look at our current conditions, the skies are fair. Um, the temperature is about 57 degrees, dew point 36 degrees, humidity at 42 percent, which is dramatically lower than it was yesterday. Barometer 30 and rising and winds coming from the northwest at 7 miles per hour. For today's stats, we see the high today was about 62 with the low being 39 rain, zero rain today, and the sun rose at 6.40 a.m. and is set to set at 5.14 p.m. As we take a look at temperatures from around the state, we see a lot of high 50s in our area right now, 53 in Huntsville, and as you go a little bit further south, you 58 in Montgomery in our area, as I said, 57, but as you go west um, Alabama, or east of Alabama, you see 60 degree weather, 60 degree temperatures. Across the southeast, you're seeing um, 50s in Birmingham, but as you go s south a little bit in Florida, the southernmost of Florida, Miami, is seeing 84 degrees, so that's, that's nice weather in Florida. And as you get to the Carolinas, they're seeing those high 60s, and in Tennessee, it's about 50 degrees. But as you stretch across the United States, all along the southernmost border of the United States, they're seeing those 70, 60 degree temperatures, which is pretty warm for January, but all across the northern portion of the United States they are seeing those freezing temperatures, 40 degree temperatures. So it's very cold up there and the reason for that is this cold front that's moving along right here is holding those cooler temperatures in the northern portions of the United States. A lot of action actually, high pressure systems, um, low pressure systems, just cold fronts all over and in our area this cold front is pushing that rain that we saw over the past couple of days, just pushing that out of our area. Um, and we should be seeing clear skies over the next couple of days. For travel weather, still, as I said, not a lot going on in our area. Just a little bit in Kentucky. They, they should be seeing some rain here or there. And for the precipitation forecast, as I said, nothing in our area, just in the southernmost part of Florida over the next 48 hours. As you stretch across from the Great Lakes all the way up until Maine, they should be seeing a mixture of rain and snow. For um, early evening tonight, we should be seeing nothing in our area, just a little bit of rain, as I said, in Florida and along um, the eastern coast to Maine. As we take a look at tomorrow's forecast, nothing in our area, as I said, so that little bit, little chance of rain in Florida. And on Sunday, still nothing in our area, just the rain and snow around the Great Lakes, mainly snow and ice, um, as it is very cold there. And still nothing in our area, absolutely nothing. We should be having a very nice weekend going into next week as well. And for tonight's forecast, as I said, we should be having very clear skies, light and variable winds coming from the north northwest at three miles per hour, so very light winds, but the low is 39 degrees. And for tomorrow's forecast, it will be sunny all day tomorrow, um, so it would be a nice day to get out and enjoy the sun. Winds coming from the west northwest at 10 miles per hour with a high of 67. And for the four-day forecast, we see that we should be seeing sun all throughout the weekend and getting into um, next week, Saturday, the high is 67, but the low is freezing, so be aware of that. Sunday, the high is 60, 62, and the low is, um, it'll, it'll just be very cool at night while it's about 60 degrees during the day, so it should be very sunny and just very cool and comfortable all throughout the weekend and the rest of the week. Well, that's good news. Definitely looking forward to those warmer temperatures. Oh, yeah, definitely. Thank you, Tiffany. Thank you. Thanks.